The Porsche 911 is the one that mom loved best. It's the one with all the trophies, the one uh, you'll see around the world on every racetrack in the world. But some people think the Cayman is the one that should be out in front. And one of those people is Rick DeMann. Rick, good Hi, to Mike. Meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, Thanks so, for having us here. Uh, we're here at Monticello Motor Club. Rick, why are we here today and what's, uh, what's happening? What does it have to do with Caymans? Caymans, I agree, they're one of my favorite cars as well. And today we've bought two Caymans with uh, a few modifications to each one. The main reason we have both of them here today is one has a PDK transmission and one has a six-speed transmission. I personally think the PDK is the transmission of the future. It's very quick. Now this does not look like uh, a normal Cayman to me. No, Mike, this is not a normal <laughs> Cayman. This is a Cayman that I believe should have been built. This is one that uh, Porsche doesn't build. Uh, we build this car um, according to the Porsche Cup car uh, specs. So in, in every ride, it's, a, it's a, um, a Cayman Cup car. So if you look at the front end of this car, we have a carbon fiber Cup car nose, and that's the Porsche GT3 Cup car we're speaking about. It has much more aerodynamic uh, downforce than a standard Cayman nose. It has uh, openings for better cooling, which we use to keep these cars cool. So this is a GT3 Cup car nose. That's correct. Grafted onto a Cayman. Grafted onto a Cayman, as well as the, uh, the fenders, which are also carbon fiber, as well as some other bodywork. There's some special fitment to make these uh, fit on a Cayman right, uh, but they're, they're done, and, and as you can see, it's a very attractive, uh, good-looking front end there. Did the pieces line up, or did you have to do a lot of custom work down here? Mike, there's a bit of custom work involved in making these fenders fit on a Cayman. There's a, a few a small dimensional differences between the Cayman fender and the 911 fender, but as you can see, we've, uh, we've uh, handled that, and, and the, the fit is quite nice, and it looks, uh, looks like it's supposed to. It looks like it's original equipment. The nose and fender are carbon fiber, as well as this door. This is from the GT3 uh, Cup car from Porsche Motorsport, uh, which is also a beautiful carbon fiber inlay on the door itself, extremely light, maybe three pounds compared to a 50 pound door on the, uh, on the cars. That's a big difference. That's a huge difference. Um, now this particular car here has Porsche's seven speed PDK transmission. Uh, we've done some modifications to make it uh, stay cool. We've done some modifications to make it uh, race worthy. And this car is built as a race car with the PDK. I want to show you one feature of the PDK transmission, which is it has a paddle shifter. That's yeah. pretty cool. I mean, you've got the electronics coming in from here, yeah. right? And then uh, and you got the, the actual paddles. Just the actual paddles right on it. So shift up, you hit the right button, you hit shift down, you hit the left button. It's, it's, uh, it's super fast and super fun. And that's kind of a new thing for a race car. I've only heard of one or two other in the country that have, uh, have attempted to race PDK transmissions. I personally feel it's a, it's a far superior transmission to the six-speed manual shift. Uh, it's lightning fast when it makes its shifts. So you've, you're on the throttle the whole time. You never lose any acceleration time. Uh, it also downshifts beautifully. It matches the RPMs as good as or better than any professional race car driver that I've ever met. Um, so it's very quick. It's very fast. Um, it also has seven speeds, which makes it a little closer gearing uh, than the six speed has. So it's a little better positioned in some spots on the track. And you can run it in auto mode and manual mode, just like a stock Cayman. Correct. You can put it in drive and let it do its thing. It's a, it's, Porsche has programmed it with a Sport Plus mode that is uh, extremely fast. It's, it's designed like a race car. And they also have their standard mode, which, which allows you to drive it on the street and feels like a regular automatic transmission. So if you're just getting into track driving like here in Monticello, you can learn your shift points kind of from the, uh, the algorithm a little bit? You can. You can let it do its thing and then learn where it's supposed to shift. Or you can, once you learn the areas, you can use the paddle to preemptively shift it up and shift it down so you're more in control of it. So how much of this is stock Cayman and how much of it is race car stuff that you did? I would say this car is about 60% uh, stock Cayman. The platform and most of the shape and form and uh, electronics and things like that are from the Cayman. Uh, we've taken a lot of the pieces from the 911 GTS and put into this, uh, this Cayman. We've taken the 3.8 liter engine from the GTS. Oh, so the 3.8 liter uh, 911 GTS motors in there? That's correct. In the stock form, it's a 387 horsepower engine. We do some tuning and some uh, other little bits to put in the Cayman here, which make 403 horsepower. That's plenty of horsepower for a mid-engine uh, race car like, like this one. So when you drop the 911 motor in, do the electronics talk to each other, or is there custom stuff you have to do with that? Since the architecture of the Cayman 3.4 liter engine and the 911 3.8 liter engine are from the same family of generational uh, electronics, we can adapt most of it to fit right away without any major changes. We do put the programming from the 3.8 liter Carrera engine into this to make it run properly. Uh, and it also, that's a very loud car in the background <laughs> there. Uh, so it does, it does integrate very well. We have to take some of the components that make it uh, a Cayman engine and, and uh, put them back on the 911 engine to fit in the Cayman chassis. 
So there's something sticking out of the back here. Uh, is that a wing? If I'm that that is a wing. This is a uh, Demand Motorsport exclusive aero package for the Cayman, which we've designed. We've taken the the airfoil in the shape of the GT3 RS wing, which is a Porsche factory um, GT3 car. It's a beautiful wing. So we took the the basic shape of it and adapted it to fit the Cayman body. And we've made these special uprights and this base to make them fit on this car. And aesthetically, it's very Porsche, and it's very effective in, in, uh, on a race car and giving some downforce to the rear of the car. So basically, this is a GT3, a Cayman GT3. So if, if Porsche had built a GT3 Cup car that, uh, out of the Cayman platform, um, this would be it. What is it about the Cayman platform? Obviously, the engine is in the middle instead of in the, hanging off the back. Is that really the thing, or is there other things about the platform that, uh, that really make this a, an excellent I choice? think that's the main choice that would make this a better race car. Uh, simply because it's mid-engine design. The mid-engine design keeps the weight in the middle of the car, and uh, most every Porsche uh, pro prototype race car ever produced was a mid-engine car. So the mid-engine car is just superior in its handling ability. So the Cayman being a mid-engine car, it just has a, a very natural neutral balance to, uh, to start with inherently. Um, I grew up racing uh, Porsche 914.6s, which, uh, which were you know, uh, some Le Mans winners in 1970, and uh, I've always loved the mid-engine design. I thought it's very nimble and very quick, and this is a modern day version of that car, um, and we've brought it up to the standard of uh, Porsche uh, GT3 Cup specs with, uh, with its safety equipment and performance. So, so what are the differences Really, I mean, for, is it just that you just don't get that pendulum rear engine uh, swing back and forth that you have to manage when you're doing, uh, when you're taking a corner, um, and it's just, just lies flat and, um, and is much more neutral? Is that really just the... That's mainly it. The 911 does have a, a bit more of a pendulum effect in the rear, and, and drivers compensate that for when, when they drive the car. It's a, it's a unique driving style that most people, you know, that spend time in 911s, they learn that. Um, this takes away that, uh, that, that need to, to understand that. It's a little bit more neutral and a little easier to drive for the everyday guy. Uh, but also the extremely experienced guys uh, appreciate it because it, I think it has a higher ability level than the 911 would have in its cornering. I mean, it does seem to grip like mad. Yeah. So uh, tires are just uh, sort of spec tires? These tires are the, uh, the Hoosier R6, which is a, uh, it's called a DOT legal slick tire. So it still has enough tread to be uh, Department of Transportation legal. Uh, used by many different spec series around the country as a standard tire. So it's got a, a tremendous amount of grip over a street tire. It's not uh, a fully um, uh, slicked tire in the sense of, so it's not a, not a, a true top level race tire, but it does offer you know, a tremendous amount of grip for this kind of car. So not street legal, you can't just buy this and... Nope, you'll get in big trouble driving this <laughs> on the street. <laughs> so um, what about price? I mean, so um, this is actually a Cayman R underneath, right? Correct. So what's, uh, what would it cost me to, um, to grab one of these and uh, take it on the track? There's, a, uh, there's a, a big array of options that are, are added to this car. So I, if we had to put a price range on it from, say, this one here to this one, it would go from about $140,000 to $200,000. And of course, uh, this one has the PDK transmission, and this one here has the six-speed transmission. So let's talk about this one. This has the stock Cayman R bodywork on it. Uh, it's prepared exactly the same way as this car in the sense of the interior, the safety equipment, the 3.8 liter engine, the wing, the brakes, all the mechanicals are the same. Uh, the lightweight carbon body option is not on this car. So it is, um, it's, a, it's a different car in the sense that it has a six speed transmission. That's one of the main reasons we're here today is to compare these on the track. So tell me about today. Today we bought both of these here for the purpose of deciding which one is faster on the racetrack. There's a lot of uh, conversation about whether the PDK is faster on a racetrack than a six speed. Some people say yes, some people say no. So can the machine shift faster than the human? It definitely does. <laughs> so today we're here to, to, to test that, and then to do that, we've, uh, we've brought along um, on loan from Rumbum Racing, uh, Nick Longy, who's the 2012 Team GS champion in uh, Grand Am. So Nick is here today to test both of these cars and decide which one is fast. Perfect guy to try it out. Let's talk to Nick. Yeah, let's talk to him. Welcome, Nick. Hey. How are you today? Good. Hey. Good. Mike? Well, I want to uh, thank Rumbum for uh, allowing Nick to uh, come up and spend the day with us here. Uh, Nick is a um, 2012 Team GS champion in the uh, Continental Tire Challenge. Uh, Nick spent the season driving a Demand Motorsport constructed uh, 911, very similar to these two cars. So the man for the job today to test our transmissions to see which one's going to be faster would be Nick Longy. How's your right arm? Is it uh, ready to go? Right Remember? arm's ready to go. You know, right arm, my two fingers for the paddles as well. <laughs> I've been, you know, working on this, you know. Doing some right. little speed bag, you know, kind of thing. 
<laughs> well, I'm excited to find out which one's faster, so uh, let's cool. get to it. Let's do it. All right. I like it. It's a beautiful brand new race car. There's uh, not much not to love. It's great. Works perfect. Nice. What was the lap time? 230.2. The fact of the matter is it's a very easy lap time to get to in that sense. The car is very accessible in terms of performance. There's a high level of performance without demanding a lot out of the driver. You can get in and go. It gives you the impression you can push harder without holding you back also. So it's got a very, very wide sort of envelope in terms of what you, uh, how you can drive it and what you can get out of it. So uh, pretty much perfect. So Nick, you've, uh, you've spent the season in, a, in a, a 911 GS car, which has a similar motor and similar transmission and similar uh, componentry built by the same company. So how, how does that uh, feel in comparison to the, the race car you spent the season in? The race car is a little bit edgier, yeah. a little bit tougher. It's a little more, uh, you need more on the edge all the time. Uh, this, as I said, is just a more, more comfortable car. It's easier to get on top of. It's less, uh, less manic. Less frantic. So if, if our Mark was a, 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 an enthusiast, more of a, uh, you know, a track enthusiast, a high performance enthusiast, would be more hitting the mark there than, than a true full out, blown out race car. For sure. How did your driving style change between, uh, between driving the 911 and driving this? I mean, did it change and you use different lines and stuff? Not really in terms of, you know, it's got uh, four, uh, four tires and a steering wheel, you know, pretty much the same thing you're trying to do. Uh, I would say that this, as I said, this car is just a little bit easier to get to the to the to the top of the to get to get the most performance out of it. Uh, I use the word manic. You know, race cars tend to be manic, uh, very fast, a lot going on. So it's a little bit edgier, a little bit harder to get your head into like really doing that. It just demands a lot out of the driver to do that. They're more sort of on a, on an edge. Um, this car is a little bit easier from that standpoint. Um, it's clearly not slow. <laughs> it's a very fast car. Um, but it's just, it's just more user friendly, you know, and it just uh, feels great. I mean, I didn't want to stop, I want to keep going. Excellent. So, well, let's go on to the PDK car and see if you can beat that time. We'll see what happens. That's all right. My gut tells me it's, it's faster. 228.7. I believe that. That was nice. Yeah. Uh, again, same thing as the other car. Tried to be very consistent driving them exactly the same way. You know, now this is, uh, th this is cool. This is a very cool deal. So you don't regret having that uh, sort of mechanical connection to the transmission that the, uh, that the paddles give you? I mean, that the, the, the shifter gives you. Shifting. Yeah. Um, no, no, not be because I would say if, this, if the paddle shift system were sort of not good, <laughs> you know, like some of the older ones, then yeah, for sure, that would be an issue. For a driver who's got a little bit less experience, you know, the gearbox is going to be, even if you're very good with the gearbox, heel-toe downshifting, braking, being on the limit of the braking is always a little bit difficult, and, you know, eight times out of ten, you get it right, two times out of ten, you won't. There's a couple of tenths right there. So, for a person who's either just starting out or, you know, sort of a, a club racer, there is zero doubt in my mind that this is faster. Like, any track, any time, it's just, plus, it's, it's, foolproof in the sense of your approach to every corner is calm and you're thinking about driving the car faster. You're not worried about mismatching a downshift and obviously with a mechanical gearbox you can do a 4-1 you know, downshift and blow the motor up and then you just cost yourself a lot of money and spun the car and wrecked it. That's one of the side advantages of that PDK is you can never force a downshift and ruin your engine. It's, it's got you covered. Which by the way, and I'd say for somebody with a lot of experience and a professional, that's one of the things that I was driving there. I said, I want to drive this car more because what it does is it, it, it takes that even the slightest amount of doubt in your mind out. A professional driver is you know, coming up to a corner, sometimes you're cornering, braking, turning, right as you're downshifting, as you're turning in, the car is sliding. You're gonna get it right a lot of the times, but sometimes there's a little bit of doubt in your mind or you're just kind of moving a little bit on the brake pedal and it's gonna happen. And it's not seconds 
for that professional driver at that moment. But there's zero doubt in your mind it's going to go wrong. You can focus on what you're doing in the car, and you can go faster. And that, if you have that kind of confidence in every corner, if there's 14 turns and there's you know one tenth per corner, that's a lot of time. Yeah, it's free time. Reducing the workload on a, on a driver is uh, in the long term will uh, you know relieve the stress level and, and make you do uh, what you do even better. It allows you to focus on one thing at a time, maximize your braking, maximize the line, maximizing the speed and the balance of the car in a corner, which is it, it's just free time. And there's there, there's, there's no reason. There's no downside to it, nothing but upside. Cool. Great. Nick, thanks so much for coming out. I really appreciate the input and, uh, and spent driving the cars yeah, today. I want to thank uh, Monticello Motor Club also for hosting us today for this, this test. It's been really uh, uh, nice and convenient to come to this beautiful racetrack. And they make the best cookies in the world, so let's go get some. <laughs> yeah, All right, let's go.